Hailing from Dimension X, here's a look at the new NECA toys, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Donatello vs. Krang. After being accidentally exposed to radioactive ooze, four ordinary household pets are transformed into a band of wise-cracking, pizza-loving, villain-dicing adolescent reptiles. Meet Leonardo, the super-cool, sword-wielding leader, Raphael, the jokester, hurling manhole, and one-liners at rapid succession, Donatello, the brain behind the brawn, and Michelangelo, the ice cream pizza-gobbling party animal. Whether it's facing fierce enemies or saving humanity from near extinction, with the guidance of their sensei, these heroes in a half shell are always ready for straight out of the sewer action. Let's get some measurements going. First, we'll measure Donatello, to putting it to the very top of his head and stopping right there. The figure stands 5.6 inches in height, which in centimeters works out to be 14.2 centimeters tall. Krang I did something a little bit differently though. In theory, Krang doesn't come out of the packaging looking like this. He's in this mechanized suit after you put the figure in place. But because he doesn't really stand on his own, I'm instead actually putting him in the suit first and then we're gonna measure him off and then I'll show you how all of that comes assembled or disassemble it and then we'll reassemble it in the video. So Krang much shorter than Donatello. According to the Ultra Measuretron 5000 the figure stands 4.3 inches in height which in centimeters works out to be 11 centimeters exactly. For some scale comparisons here is Leonardo which we've just recently had a look at. We'll move Donatello over just slightly and put Leonardo right next to him. As you can see, the exact same body, same coloring as well. This is one of those instances in which the turtles don't have their own corresponding, their own specific color. Here, because they are pulled from the cartoon, the cartoon turtles all have the exact same color. And then the other comparison we'll do as well is we'll bring in Shredder to go along with Krang. And uh, you can see Shredder is by far the tallest of the turtle toys so far. And until we have a look at the foot soldiers, he's probably gonna be the tallest of this line currently. First thing we'll have a look at is Donatello's accessories. He comes with one, one bow staff. The staff is very nicely done. As you can see, they've put in the grain work there of the wooden, of the wooden uh, staff there. It does have its bandage wrappings in the middle there in which the turtle's gonna be able to hold on to it. Uh, this particular turtle also does have a slot in the back. I say it almost as if this is a new entry, but Leonardo also did have his. Um, his one sword, as you probably saw in the review, was a little trickier to get in place. Donatello, I almost find, is a bit of a similar issue. It's just a real struggle, it seems, to get this properly in place. Like, it seems to be a specific shape. So you try to line up your best to get that staff uh, in the right placement, and eventually you do get it. But it, again, it's not quite as simple. There's a hole, slide the staff in place, and you're good as go. Here though, you have to be a little bit more, you have to struggle a little bit more, and then you know you have to kind of, yeah, force it in place before you eventually get it all prime and proper. Uh, I will probably just end up displaying the Donatello and really all the turtles with their corresponding weapons anyways. But again, it's nice that they have a section on the back, though a little bit of a struggle to get in place, does have a, a section on the back at least to store the bow staff. Unlike Donatello, or unlike Leonardo, the one that we had looked at before, let me just go and reach off to his. There you go. Leonardo did come with the communicator a closed up version of the communicator. And no, you're not seeing double. Well, you are seeing double, but you don't need your eyes checked. Donatello comes with the exact same one. Um, as I had mentioned with uh, Leonardo, you can in theory take the communicators and just kind of wedge them behind their straps. I find it was a lot easier to get uh, Leonardo's in place, but there's, there's Donatello's. Like I said, just tuck that in into the sash and then just to get, retrieve it, I find just pop, just kind of pop your finger through the top uh, and then uh, you should be able to slide that right out. Sometimes the legs, as you can probably see, do get in the way of things, but you get the, the communicator eventually out of place. The other thing that he does, however, come included with is the open version of the communicator. 
it begs the question I would have certainly made when looking at this myself. How come Leonardo didn't come with both versions as well? But I guess their logic is, much like their Predator lines, being that they all are really universal pieces you can mix and match. If you don't want to display the turtles with the open communicator and the closed communicator, you can, you know, Leonardo could be displayed with this. Donatello could be displayed with the closed version or the staff and you just mix and match it depending on which way you want to have the turtles displayed. I, by the way, did have it the wrong way. There's the other side there. You can see the screen. It would have been neat if they had put a screenshot there of April O'Neil, kind of in the same way that Shredder had the screenshot of Krang. But again, nice little inclusions, uh, very show accurate accessories. Uh, Donatello also comes with a pair of interchangeable hands. Not really sure why specifically these hands had to be included because like they're not that much different than the hands that are currently already in the socket of his arms. I mean, they're very, very similar in size, shape, and of course, color. Uh, the only thing I could have thought, well, it, one would be a design for the communicator, but again, the communicator is way too big. So at least we have extra hands to work with. What I might end up just doing is heating the fingers and widening in it enough that I could actually have one holding the communicator because it just is really impossible to do so otherwise. And then once that's cooled, then I should have a grip wide enough to hold specifically the communicator. Without that, I mean, you really wouldn't want to warp the existing hands because then you wouldn't have, much like Leonardo, you wouldn't have the proper grip to hold his supplied weapon. So let's have a look at Donatello. We'll bring in once again Leonardo. They are identical to one another. Not really much has changed in all honesty, other than really, of course, the heads. Uh, the rest of the bodies are identical other than just the new paint swap of now from blue to now purple. And of course the D is different on the front of the sash versus Leo's L on the front. I don't know if I actually even mentioned it with Leonardo, but both the letters are raised, so they're not simply just painted in place. Where Leo had the grimmest face, Donatello instil, instead has a more composed, uh, probably planning his next invention face. Again, he's a much more determined. Leo's is a little bit more aggressive in nature. The bodies continue to be identical, even on the backs, other than the sashes. But being that these are separately rubberized pieces, it's easy just to, to add those differently to, like I said, the existing bodies are in place. Likely, NECA Toys, of course, had a base body to go from and then just painted the turtle's colors specific to that turtle to make one over the other. Again, I love the fact that they are unique head sculpts to one another. Looking forward to eventually getting both the uh, Leonardo, Donatello, and then, of course, you know, Raphael, Michelangelo, and getting all four turtles put together and getting them all on display. I know I just, uh, I just gave it away. I know I gave away the Michelangelo and Raphael, Raphael review will be coming. I'm sure you guys probably already knew that already. I think I might even mention it for the Leonardo review. So we'll not spend a whole lot of time, being that we've delved fairly deep into this figure when we looked at Leo. Um, still the, love the coloring, the fact that they've got the cell shaded or darker shaded, uh, darker green that's been added to this slightly more lo uh, olive color that makes up the majority of this body. Uh, he even has, I don't even mentioned it even with Leo's review, but he's got just a slight band of darker brown that's just around the outer areas of his shell. And it's just these little small details that you really appreciate that NECA Toys would have just spent the time, thought it out, and not just phoned in, even like just the paint. Clearly they didn't phone in just the paint, because I mean, you, like everything has a purpose, a rhyme, and a reason for why they painted it certain ways. Even like the ankles have a darker band of green that's been just added on the end. They didn't have to do it, but they, I'm glad that they did. Once again, you got peg holes in the undersides of his feet, and just a great looking head sculpt. Donatello would be one of my favorite turtles, especially playing the Turtle Arcade game. Usually I would go to Donatello or Michelangelo as my go-to guys uh, most of the time because if I was playing with somebody, they nine times out of 10 usually picked Donatello, so I was uh, Leonardo, so I was usually relegated to picking another turtle. And then just from that, my love for Donatello and Michelangelo grew. So let's have a look at this guy's posability. Don't want to talk too much about Turtles the Arcade Game, although, I mean, I could talk for hours about the Turtles Arcade Game. The head goes up and down, left and right, as this reviewer continues to yammer on about the Turtles Arcade Game. The arms hinge outward. Uh, 
all the way around as well, you'll still get that same issue where the shell sort of causes the arm to have to move out slightly in order to get that full circular rotation. Swivel on the bicep, uh, swivel on the arm, hinge up and down on the elbow, and swivel in the wrist, swivel in the wrist. Um, once again, he's got the waist swivel, but it really doesn't doesn't serve much of a purpose because obviously you can see it stops right at the shell. You can't get any further past that point. Legs go forward, back. Uh, because you do have the peg holes, you of course can incorporate, incorporate a NECA stand. So if you want to get a little bit more dynamic with these figures, you can certainly do that. Uh, he does have the bend in the knee. Uh, there is, now this is the one thing, there is no, from what I can see, a swivel on the lower leg. I don't know why they didn't put in a lower leg swivel. Um, they did put a double hinge on the knee, that's great, but they didn't put a swivel, I guess because there was a double hinge on the knee, if it was a single hinge, you could have that that peg joint swivel. Because he's got a double hinge on the joint, uh, of course it eliminates the option then of a swivel on the lower leg. Uh, the feet, however, do make up for that, for the fact that they do have the ankle rocker up and down motion, and you can rotate the feet all the way around. There is Donatello. Very nice, very accurate to the show. Digging these turtle toys, as you can probably guess it from the tone of my voice. Let's move ourselves, our efforts over and have a look at Krang. Now, Krang, I did dismantle the initial look at him when we did the measurements, just to show you how Krang comes out of packaging. A very, again, cartoon. It sounds so much like the broken record for me to continue saying that, but it is a very show accurate look to Krang. I mean, I can almost just hear his voice now being emitted out from the smaller plastic rendition of him. I will say that the coloring on him, while good, I feel like is a little too light in pink. I always picture Krang more of a, like a bubblegum pink. And while this is a bubblegum pink color, it probably could have afforded being one shade darker. Just one shade. Not to this extent. I think this is too dark. But you can see how they've added that additional shading there on the underside. And really all of his arm areas, even the little, I don't know what you would call these, the little skin flaps coming down from his mouth, also get a little bit of that red color there as well, just in between there. He's a great looking figure. Like I said, I just probably would have done one shade, just one shade darker than that. Comes, a com comes with a couple of different various ways to display the figure, one of which being atop of his little tiny tripod perch, which is sort of the first way, the first time that we sort of see Krang. We, s we see his hands, but then when we eventually get the reveal of him, he's actually, I believe, sitting on top of this little tripod stand. He, of course, gets upgraded over the openers, the, lot, the first five or six episodes. I think episode three, he gets the android, which, uh, or might be actually episode two, episode two or three, I'd have to go back. Uh, still, one of my favorite Turtles uh, moments of the opener of the cartoon was like the first four episodes. Those are episodes I still continue to watch to this day. So he does have that. I mean, it sort of just sits in top, sits inside that little creviced area, and you could do the blizzards test. I don't know, blizzard from Dairy Queen. They always used to do this. When you get a blizzard, they would tip it over top of your head. The joke would be on the customer that one day, that one day where the temperature just wasn't right, the ice cream was just a little bit softer and it would be dumping over top of their heads. I'm sure that happens at some point and that's why they don't, I don't think they do this anymore. But So if anyone was wondering why I say that's the blizzard test, just, it wasn't always over your head. It was just sometimes it was just say, your blizzard's ready, and they would go like this. One of these, one of these days, I'm sure that thing tipped right, uh, you know, completely over. Uh, for his articulation, he does have uh, ball joints in his legs and his arms. They're kind of more like peg joints, and you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. But a, a decent, again, rendition of Krang. Screams, screams, oh, screams that this guy needs to get his Android body. I hope this is something that NECA will do for a future release. Uh, build a figure would be an idea that maybe NECA doesn't usually throw around, but it would guarantee that people are picking up the Turtles toys. Not that there's really a guarantee that's necessary. People are likely gonna be picking these guys up anyways, but Android body is definitely the way to go. In the meantime though, we can kind of make do with this mechanized suit that Krang has. Now in, in the show, I believe he did have this Krang mechanized suit a couple of times 
Um, one of the obviously the big nods too is also that this is a very much an inspired mech suit that was featured in the only Krang figure that we had gotten up to well the er initial run release from Playmates. Krang came inside this mech suit. It was uh, certainly a little bit more simplified than this. NECA has uh, really done a great job of kind of elevating this to the next level, right up to the fact that it's got little buttons and, and all this great panel lining that they've done around the wiring area, around the little knobs. Everywhere there should be panel lining, NECA Toys really has just done a bang up job on this. You can see even like the underside here has the, uh, the panel lining all around the little component pieces. If they had not have done that, I certainly would have gone in and probably thought of doing it myself. Just taking the Sharpie marker and you know just wiping away the excess to give ourselves some panel line action happening. Uh, much like the original Playmates Toys version, you can lift up the dome. Now Krang, though whatever effort you try to put him into the cockpit, will not fit. Not like this at least. He does have holes on the front and those holes actually come into play because you're going to go ahead and take his arms and remove them from the socket. And then you're going to go ahead and put him into the cockpit like this. It is a snug fit, but Krang does fit into place and all his necessary brain parts do fit in properly. Uh, but it is a bit of a, it is a snug fit though. You can close that off, then go ahead and go back to the arms. And they were ball joints. They just don't move as much like a, a ball joint. You take those ball joints, plug them into the sockets right here. There's one and there's the second one right there. And then once those are in place, you can also rotate those as well, depending on how you want to have them displayed. A great looking add-on piece, if for the very least we're not going to be getting ourselves an Android body of Krang just yet. Oh please, oh please, oh please. At the very least, we got ourselves a mech suit version of Krang. It does have posability, you can move the legs back and forth, and it does also have leg articulation. It is really neat. Um, Krang, I... I am happy that we have gotten ourselves Krang. I don't feel like he does have as much the cartoon accurate colors that Shredder had, but I'm just thrilled as punch as always that we are finally getting ourselves cartoon renditions of both Donatello and the evil brain Krang. Now, each of these two packs are gonna be a turtle along with a villain. Uh, Leonardo comes with Shredder. Donatello, as you saw here in this review, comes with the evil Krang. And then both Raphael and Michelangelo are gonna each come with a foot soldier. Initially, I thought I wish they could have filled that slot with one different villain, but then I thought to myself, if they were to singly sell the foot soldier, I'd be inclined to probably pick up at least two or three of these. So really, NECA has answered that service anyways by giving you two foot soldiers that you can put poised on either side of Shredder. This is, of course, not the end, at least I hope it's not going to be the end, of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle brand from the folks over at NECA Toys, because according to screenshots, I think we're already getting ourselves a Rocksteady and Bebop. I hope the availability on these, on those future figures, are going to be as much uh, quantity available as what we are seeing with these ones. These ones aren't hard to come by. In fact, most of the people I'm following on Twitter uh, are posting screenshots where they're saying, okay, I can find these in good amount quantities at their local stores. So if you are interested in picking up these for yourself, I don't think most comic book stores are going to be stocking these. I think they are a Target exclusive. Providing you do have a Target in your area, you should be able to easily find these in stock. Unlike, unfortunately, the GameStop exclusive Movie Turtles, which sadly this humbled reviewer still doesn't have in his collection. And that makes me oh so sad. While I'm oh so sad about the movie Turtles, I'm oh so thrilled and joyed that the folks over at NECA Toys are producing cartoon Turtles. Just let that sit in for a second. Just digest that for a second, that we are getting cartoon accurate Turtles. I wish we could have gotten these back in the day when I was growing up and loving watching the cartoon, but the more I look at it, the more I think about it, I think I would have enjoyed these more now as an adult, being able to kind of go back and think of my childhood with better sculpted turtle toys, better than the ones that we would have grown up with from Playmates Toys. Again, if you guys are interested in picking up the Donatello and the Krang, or really any one of the four turtle two-packs, um, you should be able to find them in your local retail stores. And I think they are Target exclusives. Today we were having a look at the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This was uh, Donatello and Krang. And again, if you guys stay tuned, we're going to be having a look at the Michelangelo and Foot Soldier and Raphael and the Foot Soldier. 
Make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below, guys. My friends, my colleagues of the interweb, certainly more videos like this will be coming soon. Literally, like this will be coming soon. And certainly more videos from NECA as well will be coming soon to the channel. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time.